Hello, I'm Anthony. Set myself the challenge of writing an album or putting an album together, I should say, because it's actually going to be composed or formed of songs that are mostly complete already. What you can see on screen here is a load of WAV file imports of, let's have a, let's just shrink it a little bit, of the songs that are actually going to comprise the album, I think. Uh, this is, you know, very early stage. But these are all songs that I've written over the past couple of years. And I've selected out of everything that I have finished over the past couple of years, the songs that fit perfectly within what I want this album to say. So over the course of this series, I'm basically going to chart this process. I've never written an album before, so I'm figuring it out as I go along. And I got to the stage where I realised I was in the process of writing this piece of music called River Song, which I've decided is going to be the beginning of the album. And there's a separate Back on Track series talking about that. Um, and actually it's um, it's sibling at the end called River's End. But obviously I need to fit everything in between. And so I'm just figuring out how to go about doing that. Now in typical Anthony fashion, we can't do anything without having a spreadsheet. So what I did was went through all of the songs that I've published in the past couple of years on uh, on this YouTube channel. These are all the songs that I want to be on the album, that they all thematically and musically fit the idea that, that I've got for it. And the first thing I did was figure out what all of the keys of the songs were, because this gives me the option in some situations to segue from one song into another, and some of them work really well. My favourite segue is right at the end. So here's Breath of Air, uh, written in a combination of E and E Dorian. I think the main verse is in uh, the major scale and the chorus is in Dorian, if I remember rightly. River's End is in E minor, so at least they've got the same root and it turns out that they fade together really nicely. So let's turn it down so don't blast your ears and then figure out what this sounds like. <laughs> really 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 like that <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that just makes me so excited so happy to be a musician to to be playing with this stuff and figuring it out I've never done anything like that before it's the first time I've ever crossfaded two songs together and it just it just sounds exactly what I want it to be maybe the fading's a little bit long I'll you know I'll figure out the details later this is such a, a rough draft that I've, th I've thrown down here but that is good i like it it's staying and i'm going to wrap everything else around it you know sometimes you come to these things and you can very easily second guess yourself and basically try every single combination of every song and no that works just i'd have to remember that it works and have kind of faith uh, you know to carry that idea through this is the interesting stuff this is what i'm learning not every segue works so this is coming out of River Song into um, what I think will be the, the second song on the album, Undertow. Let's hear that. Down at the Undertow so here's the problem with that, the lyrics start too soon. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the fading. What I'm gonna to need to do is go back into Undertow and change the intro so that I, so that it will work with River Song. And this is one of the big challenges for me now. Figuring out the context of each of these songs, where it's gonna sit in the album, what song is gonna be before and after it, and whether or not those two things can be cross-faded together if they can be, do I need to make any changes to the project to ensure that that works? This is another example of a crossfade that will work eventually, but doesn't work yet. This is Undertow into Springtime. Both of these songs are in C major. The reason why this doesn't work yet is because 
uh, Springtime doesn't have enough of a lead in. It, it gets up and running too quickly. So again, go back in, edit the project with a view to, to, to doing, to basically to make this work. It's not bad. But if I do a little bit more acoustic guitar noodling at the end of Undertow, and a little bit longer um, intro at the beginning of springtime, I can tie those th two things together and make it far more consistent. So I'm in the process of basically going through all of the songs that I've decided are going to be on the album and figuring out where they want to live. Swapping these songs around a lot, I've done spent a couple of days on this so far, just putting the songs in different places, listening to how one song ends, does it go into the next one? Sometimes they really jar and you think, ooh, no. Some, some, of the, um, some of the connections I'm still not particularly happy with. Snowfall into Little Land um, doesn't work particularly well yet. Let's hear that one. very well be that it's because one or both of those guitar lines need to be re-recorded and if I had the same guitar sound on both sides of the fence that it would work. This is why I'm going to need an over, a complete overhaul or review of all of these songs to figure out what needs to be re-recorded and what can survive. I know for certain that I'm going to be remixing all of the songs because at the bottom of this spreadsheet we've got three tiny little statements that have an awful lot of work wrapped up in them. The first is just a mention of the kit. This is the Groove Agent kit. Um, the last song that I worked on, which is River Song, has a drum sound that is my favorite of all of the songs that I've written so far. So I'm gonna explore the possibility of using that single kit on all of the songs on the album to maintain, to, to create some sense of continuity, to really tie them together um, rhythmically. I've also got Master Bus FX, which I've been kind of evolving a suite um, of effects that I really like on the Master Bus. Together, they've just started making my song sound better, so I kind of need to go back and remaster all of the songs with, uh, with those effects on again, with the idea of creating this sense of continuity. If I've got one homogenous sound across the album, even though the songs themselves are very unique and very musically discreet, they're gonna kind of they're gonna feel as if they're part of a bigger whole. If I've got this deliberate understanding of the of the environment in which you know they're being created, and then this single innocent looking line, re-record all guitar, bass, and vocals. You know, wow. Particularly the vocals over the course of the past couple of years, have dramatically improved. Firstly, the the noise in this room because the PC used to be in the room with me. And now it's in a different room and it makes such a massive difference. But secondly, um, just my process, the, the way that I go about recording the, the vocals and um, even the guitar sound, you know, that the, they have fundamentally improved. It's just a cleaner, better sound that I'm recording now than, than I was two years ago. So if I do all of those things, then I think it's going to really combine together to make a much stronger whole. So an awful lot of work, but, you know, I want this thing to be good. I want to make the very best attempt to make the best album I can. I'm an album person. If I can write an album of which I'm really proud, then that's a it's kind of a lifetime achievement. You know, I really want to do this thing to get it out there as a single continuous whole. So what are we looking like 52 minutes? I don't particularly care how short or long the thing is, but I really want it to feel like it's a single continuous piece of music. Uh, that, that tells a story, something about me. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.